1920, the Erie Manufacturing Corporation develops this wonderful machine, the digger. And uh, it's purely skill-based. Um, the, enter the entertainment deprived people at the time completely flip for it. Now, carnival owners love the idea and start filling it with more valuable objects, but start rigging it to fail. Enter the Johnson Interstate Transportation Act of 1951. It was put into place to ban moving gambling devices. It also uh, put a ban on the digger, which made carnies very mad. Now, after heavy lobbying, uh, the ban was removed, but so were many restrictions. Now, this is what a claw game looks like today. Nothing but silly strings of code pretty much set up to prevent most people from winning. In fact, some machines are even set up to lose every single time. Hopeless, right? Yeah. Wrong, it can be beat. <laughs> Just because something is set up to prevent you from being happy doesn't mean you should put up with it. <laughs> it's just a matter of understanding how it works and, uh, and you know, what it's made of. Now, a claw machine uh, win is determined by two factors, claw strength and payout. Now, every machine is adjusted a little bit differently, so actually watching somebody play or uh, trying out a couple of times will actually let you know just how adjusted your machine is and even if it's worth moving forward. So knowing your opponent is very important <laughs> when it comes to, uh, to actually playing the game. Now, I'm not saying to stand behind somebody and count off the number of times they play until they get a solid grab, but, which you can do, but um, <laughs> honestly, it's just a matter of feeling the machine out and kind of getting or better understanding of whether or not to play. Also, pick your prize before you put your money in. I know this may be hard for some people who fear commitment, but <laughs> when it comes to actually determining what you want to go for, having what you, uh, what you have set in mind will save you more game time. Also, when picking your prize, make sure that you are aware of any obstacles that may be surrounding it. You don't want some dirty frog or flamboyant hippo getting in the way of your goals, <laughs> okay? So position yourself accordingly, and that way you can avoid obstacles in the future. Now, in order to avoid more obstacles, play all angles. I know that, I know that 3D may be a new concept for some people, but using all available, um, all available angles will kind of put you in a better position to win. Now, also to put you in a better position, you need to center yourself directly above the prize. Also take under consideration that the claw may rotate just a little bit, which may snag an obstacle or two. So literally, it's just a matter of positioning yourself, collecting, and impressing. I know, it's pretty amazing. But not everyone's gonna be as impressed with your newfound talents, no. In fact, some companies, I'm not gonna point you out, may actually reject a resume if it says clog and aficionado on it. I know, it's amazing. But in any case, they just don't really understand what you get out of playing the game. You see this suit, this tie? These shoes, none of them have been worn from a claw game, okay? <laughs> what you get from it is a lot more important than some, you know, useless plush toy, like strategy and goal setting. You really have to, um, you have to set your goal and then build a game plan around it to kind of better your chances of winning because that $2 lobster is gonna turn into a $30 lobster quick. I promise you, trust me. Drive and determination is also a really big factor. Now the game is, is meant to lose. So you have, so claw gamers know that you need to have a certain sense of tenacity uh, when going forward and actually uh, trying to win the game. Otherwise, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna be afraid of failure. <laughs> now failure is also uh, something that, this happened more for me than, than, than actually, uh, than winning. But you just need to take under consideration that it's not a matter of actually failing, it's a matter of learning from your mistakes and looking for potential opportunities later. Expe and expectations is a big part because even after all of that goal setting, even after all of that drive, you might not get what you want. You might end up with some, you know, half cat, half dinosaur. And at the end of the thing, the claw game is an extension of yourself, okay? At its best, at its, sorry, I apologize, at its worst, it's see-through, um, easily swayed by people and money, filled with useless trivia, and usually rigged for failure. But at its best, it's a very unique creation, very complex in nature, filled with wonderful things that make other people happy, and still usually rigged for failure as well. Now. To know a little bit more about me, uh, you can go to my website, which is the, uh, uh, theimprobable.com, or you can follow me at Twitter at theimprobable.com. And if there's one thing that I can leave you tonight is this. The time you have here in this game is very short and limited. So go out there and grab it, life, before it grabs you. <laughs>